Some paint colors are just really hard to paint. Red, yellow, black, and white are some of the most difficult colors to paint in the miniature painting world. Luckily, or unluckily, there are a dozen ways to paint these colors depending on your skill level, equipment, and goal. So this video combines the easiest ways to paint each of these colors to make painting easier and more fun no matter the color. Unfortunately, this video ended up being so long that I have to split it into two. So today we're talking about red and yellow. Red. Red is difficult to paint for two reasons. The biggest one is that you can't highlight red. Traditionally, to create a highlight color, you add white or yellow to your primary color. However, when you add white or yellow to red, you end up with pink or orange, making your red no longer red. So the answer is simple. Don't highlight red. The second problem with painting red is that red is translucent, meaning whatever color you paint your base coat as will heavily impact the red that is layered on top of it. So the second rule of red is to always paint red over white. Painting your red over white assures that you will have that vibrant red you need for your highlight. So no matter if you're zenithal highlighting, slap trap, rattle can, or whatever else, be sure you always have a solid white for that red highlight to sit on top of. Layering. I'm starting my layering task with a heavy zenithal highlight and then a layer of red. Since red frequently requires multiple coats, applying red with an airbrush is a great way to increase the speed and perfection of your red. However, if an airbrush isn't really your thing, a rattle can or paintbrush works just fine. So since red is our highlight, that means that we need to create midtones and shadows to make our red look realistic. I'm mixing up two colors for my red, a midtone and a shadow planning to hide the sharp lines with glazing. You can of course apply a more segmented gradation with more layers if glazing is still a little out of your grasp. The darker your shadow, the more intense your red highlight will appear, but the more difficult it will be to paint. Choose your shadow based on your skill level and personal preference. With our paint mixed, it's time to apply them. I'm applying my midtone on the lower half of the pauldron and down the side of the arm, pulling the paint in downward strokes so that the paint is more opaque at the bottom. Wherever your paintbrush leaves your model, leaves an extra dollop of pigment. And since red is translucent, a second coat. Once it's dry, I'm applying my shadow color in the same shape, just lower down on the pauldron. I'm then creating a glaze mixture of my highlight and midtone color and midtone and shadow color, blending in rough strokes down the harsh lines. The gap between my midtone and shadow is a little high, so that area will require extra blending. Apply as many coats as is needed. Then to bring it all together, I'm doing a final pass of a thin red glaze over the whole thing, pulling from the bottom up to the top of the model so that the most pigment is deposited on the top of our vibrant red. Before we talk about the next technique, let's talk about this week's sponsor, Into the AM. I'm a jeans and a t-shirt kind of gal, and I assume jeans and a t-shirt is probably your painting uniform too. So that's where this week's sponsor, Into the AM, comes in. 
Their t-shirts are comfortable, high quality, and come in a variety of styles, like really cool graphic tees to my absolute favorite simple long sleeve that I wear all the time. Into the AM offers bundles with three graphic tees for $60 or three basic tees for $45. My viewers get a further 10% off when they use the link in my description box. All right, back to painting. Contrast paints or inks. While you absolutely can apply red straight over your white base, you can do so much better with With just a little more work, you can make your red so much more interesting by applying it over previously applied highlights and shadows. The most obvious way to do this is by painting over zenithal highlights. Whether applied with an airbrush, slap chop, or dry brush, as long as you have that true white, the red will show up like a dream. Test your red off to the side before you apply it to your model. While we do want it intense, we don't want it to obliterate our shadows. So thin down your contrast paint ink or whatever else with water if you need to. It's better to do multiple thin coats than mess up doing one thick coat. To help hide any irregularities, I applied my second layer of paint brushing in the opposite direction than I applied my first coat. Airbrush. Lastly, if you are skilled enough with an airbrush, you can apply spot highlights over a black painted model. You'll want your gradation to be extremely smooth up to a bright and vibrant white. Then you can apply a red ink or contrast paint through your airbrush, focusing mostly on that white area while slightly blending out to that darker shadow. Yellow. Yellow is difficult to paint because of the traditional way we create shadow colors. The simplest way to create shadows is to add black, to your primary color. However, when you mix black and yellow, you end up with a muddy, sickly, putrid green. The easiest way to avoid that is to use a different color to shade your yellow. The best shadow color for yellow might come as a surprise. It's pink. When applying yellow over pink, you get these beautiful, vibrant, shadows that keep the model solidly in the yellow category. Secondary, like red, yellow is very translucent and is greatly impacted by its base layer, so make sure you have that vibrant white for your yellow to sit on top of, which is why the base layer is so important. While you totally can paint yellow with a paintbrush, this color is so much easier to paint with an airbrush. Painting over a pink xenothal or a pink slap chop or dry brush will also work. If neither of those are your cup of tea, then keep watching. Oh, you're... you're still here. Oh, well, let's get into it. Layering. Base your model in white, then your vibrant yellow. Once you've based your model in yellow, create your three layering colors, a mid-tone, a secondary shadow, and a primary shadow, all with pink. I'm painting my mid-tone on the underside of the pauldron about halfway up the middle. Then my secondary shadow. Welp, that wasn't my secondary shadow. That was my primary shadow. I'm not going to worry about it too much for now. I'm just going to apply to all the necessary areas and we will fix it in the next step. Oh, 
Okay, I will now add in that secondary shadow right on top of the line where my shadow and highlight meet. Though not ideal, since the element is so large, I can easily sneak in this extra layer of paint. And now it's on to glazing. A glazing cheat I like to use is to brush in the opposite direction of my previous brush strokes. This helps hide any irregularities from our previous layers. Like I said before, applying yellow with the contrast paint over a pink dry brush or xenothyl works great. Just be sure to test it off to the side before you apply it like we did with our red and soak up any excess pooling with a damp brush. Lastly, the easiest way to paint yellow is with an airbrush. First, base your model in pink, then apply your white. This can be a general xenophil highlight or targeted areas of white. Once your white is dry, apply your yellow ink or contrast paint through your airbrush, wrapping around that pink to blend it all together. If you like this video, you can get access to more in-depth instruction by subscribing to my Patreon. Otherwise, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.